This next scale is the nasogastric tube insertion. And usually people need this if they are vomiting a lot and they want to keep their stomach emptied or if they want to start tube feeding or for whatever reason they need to put something in the stomach but we can't get it through the mouth to get to the actual stomach. In this case we're going to say the person's been vomiting for a while and they want us to put the tube down, the NG tube, nasal gastric tube down to take and keep the stomach emptied out. So I check the chart, look for the order. Um, I would also look for any contraindications here why I should not put a nasal gastric tube down. Um, also look for allergies, again worried about latex and tape type allergies. Um, once we get through looking at that part and looking at some history on and why we're doing it, because you always should know why you're putting a nasal gastric tube down, then you want to go ahead out and you want to take and wash your hands and gather up your supplies. The Emma's Basin and the cup of water will probably be already in the room. Um, the water and the straws to help him swallow as we're advancing the tube. If he can't drink the water, then sometimes just sucking a dry straw getting the air and getting into actually in the sucking mode will also help. You've got gloves, again water soluble KY jelly. You want to put something across their chest to keep them clean. A linen saver is very nice, our towel. Um, also you want to get the um, nasogastric tube. Um, most of the time your docs will have preferences. If they don't, then it's up to you to get the one you need. Usually for suctioning out the stomach, keeping the stomach lavaged, either irrigated lavage or just keeping the stomach decompressed, empty, we'll use a Salem sock. Um, we also will take and have water and an irrigation tray type um, bottle that we can actually irrigate with. And we have pH paper that we can actually check the pH. So the first thing that we want to do is come get our equipment, wash our hands and got our equipment, come down to the room, introduce ourselves and identify the patient because we certainly wouldn't want to do this on the wrong person. Um, Explain to them why we're here and what we're going to do and get their verbal consent, which Mrs. Johnson has agreed to it. I've explained everything to her and she doesn't have any questions. Provide privacy because, again, this is something that you don't want anybody watching it done to you. Um, I want to go ahead also and actually listen to her bowel sounds and do an abdominal assessment on her. Um, Again, bowel sounds might not be as important if we're going to suction the tummy out, but if we're going to feed, that would be important. So again, look to see if the abdomen is distended. Listen to the bowel sounds in all four quadrants. See if there's any one particular area that's really given her trouble. Okay. So she says it's fine, and we've done our assessment there. Also, you want to assess the respiratory status, how well she's breathing. Okay. If something goes wrong with the skill, it's going to be that the NG tube got in the lung, or that they're going to aspirate. So always look at general skin color to make sure whatever their natural color is. And then know what the respiratory status is as far as breathing 12, 15 times a minute, regular, easy, no distress. Okay. And our bowel sounds. And that the abdomen is distended or not. Okay, now that we're ready to actually start, there's a couple things you need to do before. First off, you're going to need a piece of tape. And you can just split it down the middle to actually tape on the nose to keep the NG tube in. An NG tube, y'all, is the same thing as nasal gastric tube. You will also need, when your book talks about marking it with a marking pencil, but most of the time we'll mark it with just a piece of tape so we won't forget where we're supposed to advance the tube to. Go ahead and put this across the chest. And we're going to say that Mrs. Johnson is able to drink water, and she'll be able to sip water when I get to a certain point. The MS Basin is here just in case she starts vomiting again. The water soluble KY jelly is here. And by the way, this particular skill is not sterile. It's clean, but not sterile. Okay. We've got water in, in our irrigation tray here in our syringe, and we've got our pH paper to check the pH. Now, this pack looks fine. It's a size 14. Um, we put anywhere from a 14, 16, or an 18 nasal gastric tube in. It happens to also be a Salem sump, which is normal what people will put in when we are doing it for um, vomiting. Okay. All right. Now, what we want to do is to go ahead and we're going to measure from the nose to the earlobe and then down to the xiphoid process. Okay? That's the end of the sternum, the xiphoid process. So here, we'll mark it with our tape that we have, 
and I tab the end so it's easier for me to pull off when I get ready to pull it off. This will allow you to connect to the suction tubing, so do not throw that away. Keep it handy. Um, you can either connect your syringe and be ready, or you can leave it open to air, whichever you prefer. Okay. It's going to connect here. I'm going to go ahead and put some KY, and then just lay this here. And you want to be sure and wear gloves when you're doing this. Now, we're going to put the head of the bed up. Because the bit needs to be not at a 90, but up to about a 60. Okay, there we go. All right. And then once we hit a certain spot, I'm going to let him have this cup of water so that she, excuse me, she can actually sip on it to help advance the tube. Because we never want to push on the tube until she's actually swallowing. Because you'll be fighting dead against the esophagus and the muscles there. The other thing is, if they're not swallowing, they're probably breathing. There's a greater chance of going down into the trachea. So now we've got everything ready. I'm going to go ahead and lubricate the tubing. Now. Get her to breathe out to decide which nares is more open, which one has less obstruction. And she's telling me again that it's one over here on the left. So I was like, well, okay. Now when I start this in, it goes up. Once I hit the back of the throat there, the back of the nose, I'll tilt it down. Once I hit her gag reflex, and you'll know it because you'll feel it, plus she may do a little gagging, that's when you want her to start sipping on the water. And each time you see her swallow, that's when you want to advance it. So, and when, once she swallows and gets going, you want to keep going. Now, we're in. The thing is, you don't want to let go of that, because if I let go, it's going to fall back out. That's why I tore two pieces of tape here. I'm going to go ahead and put this piece on her nose and just do a temporary job as far as anchoring it in so it won't come out. Okay. Now, what I want to do is take... And if you need to, by the way, you may have KY on these, you can pull this pair of gloves. I usually have a second pair with me to put on. And you can put your second pair on because you'll have KY all on your hands from that tubing. Okay, what you want to do now is get your stethoscope because what you want to do if there's any problem with breathing, you'd want to listen to the lungs. Okay, aspirate back. And when I ask right back, I'm looking for gastric contents. Your book has a really good picture of the gastric contents, by the way, in the chapter. So you want to be sure to look at that. Okay, I've got some gastric contents here. Every time I take the syringe out or every time this tubing is open, I have to kink this tubing off. Otherwise, she's going to wind up sucking in a lot of air in her tummy. And then she's going to be really distended. So kink her off. This is a little plug that will actually plug this off. Because what I want to do now, I aspirate it back, stomach contents. I'm going to come over here and take my pH paper and take and shoot a little bit of this on my pH paper. Okay. And then what I'll do is compare to see what my pH is. And it looks like right now it's at a 4, which a 1 to 4 pH is very good. That means I'm definitely in the stomach. If I was to get anything above a four, it could mean I'm in the small intestines, it could mean I'm in the lung, or if someone has taken any type of probonics, um, the, um, any type of antacids or uh, the probonics, then you have to take and be worried about that neutralizing the stomach. But in this case, it was a four, so I definitely know I'm in the stomach where I need to be. Okay, now, I can go ahead, depending on your, your policy where you're at, I can either go ahead and irrigate with 30 of water, and again, I would clamp it off, take out my plug, insert the syringe. Now it's a closed system, and slowly irrigate the tube. Okay. Clamp it back off. Looks like everything's going well. And now at this point, I could go ahead and turn my suction on, and it will be on continuous suctioning now. 
or intermittent, depending on what your doctor has ordered, continuous or intermittent, and usually they'll put low or medium. They're, they'll give you orders for that. So we're going to say that we're on intermittent low suction. So go ahead and just hook him up to the suction. Okay. Now, anytime you're going to get gastric secretions on your hands, you need to take and be sure and wear gloves because they are considered body, um, body fluids. Now I'm going to take this off and I'm going to put a permanent piece on. And I just split the paper or the tape and just tape it on here. See if she's doing okay. Make sure you don't get their eyes, by the way. Right now, you can also take and tape this also to their gown. Your book talks about a clip, but most places don't have the clip, but you can take it and tape it to the gown. Okay? It just takes some of the pressure off of the nose. Okay? Now, you want to clean everything up, and all of this would be disposed up in the garbage can. Um, usually we leave an irrigation tray at the bedside. You may want to leave the water or dump the water if you're going to be on for the shift, but usually we get fresh water every shift. Okay, okay. now that we're through, you want to reassess the respiratory status to make sure everything's going well, and you may even want to also take the lungs and listen to them. Definitely look and see how well they're breathing. You may want to, again, reassess the abdominal air to see if the distension has started to go down since we've got them hooked up to suction. Um, ask her if she needs anything and how she's feeling. And then put the bed back down, put the call light in reach. If she wants the head of her bed up, she can, but she can put the head of the bed down if she wants to, either way. Clear the table off and put everything back on the table that she wants. Now, most of the time, they're going to be NPO if they have this in for um, decompressing the abdomen. So, again, check the orders for that. Okay, we're all through. She has no questions for me. I'm going to discard everything here, go wash my hands, and then go document.